Now, I feel very straightforward now because it's been a long time I haven't used English in speaking. So, <laughs> and uh, I hear the previous speech, and actually I admire you because all the information you give me already inspired me a lot. So now I'm going to start my speech, and before I start my speech, I'm going to ask you a question. What do you think about wearing sneakers without a yacht? Okay, I give you some seconds to think about that topic. What do you think about wearing sneakers without a yacht? This distinct trend, in fact, results in two opposite points of view. The first one is, it's quite comfy to wear sneakers. And the second one is, pairing sneakers with a now yai reduce the feminism and attractiveness of Vietnamese women. So now, let us uh, briefly discuss what point of view to determine whether this is correct or incorrect. From the right side, they can say, we can use sneaker on any form of transit or on campus because it is easier to wear or to wear around. The wrong side may, may say that sneakers are more a kind of a shoe that make specifically for sport and exercise, and the form of sneaker is isn't well suited with Aoyai. And it's um, the Aoyai will appear less classy as a result. But the right side might be partially wrong because why must it, why must it be in sneakers when there are many other options to wear for commuting, such as sandals, flip flops, maybe? And the wrong side might also be somewhat right because flip flops or sandals they are not preferred because they are more slippery. So they choose sneakers because they are more comfortable. So. From both perspectives, everyone is restricting themselves to only two choices. The first one is to wear the clothes, and the second one is to continue wearing the sneakers. Meanwhile, you really can have the third option. You can create, create it by yourself. Look for a pair of sneakers with a smaller form that may be worn more comfortably while still being well fitted to the area. And additionally, the footwear market will become busier as a result of the growing consumer demand, isn't it? So, in fact, people are terrified of standing out and taking the initiative in everything because of their judgment of what is proper and what is not proper in one particular situation. Personally, I believe that making judgment about what is right or wrong, holding us back from progressing, both personally and socially. Believe it or not, it is not a ma the matter of being completely right or completely wrong. It is personal perspective that matters. So, everyone wants to be a pioneer, and yet when they encounter something odd or someone odd or unusual, they tend to laugh and give negative expression about it. So, remember one thing. Being different is an inevitable part of being a pioneer. And seeking acceptance may be very painful in the, be in the beginning. Because there is no row of flowers needed to the glory, right? So, what is pioneer? As for me, I will categorize pioneer in two types. The first one is passive pioneer. And the second one is proactive pioneer. Passive pioneer, I will refer this category to love-based one. Sometimes someone do something without proper intent and they end up being well-liked and broadly accepted by everyone. But passive pioneer would be able to endure for a very long time because you cannot wait for chance to happen all the time. You cannot depend on luck or chance. So, just consider people will be eager to what you're doing next. And in that case, will you be able to sustain your pioneer? So we require proactive pioneer in this, for this reason. Because proactive pioneer means that you have plans for everything ahead. Why constantly innovate yourself and make yourself a trendsetter? So, 
how to be a proactive pioneer. This is the stuff from uh, my personal experience. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna give you three steps. The first one gonna be the self reflection. Self reflection for me is the crucial step to do everything in the world. So how to do the self reflection? From my personal experience, you can observe yourself, record yourself, what you did wrong, what you, uh, what things you did that uh, received compliment, or things you did that received negative comment. That's what I do. And another option to do the self-reflection, you can ask your friends or families, what do you think about me? What do you think that my strength or my weakness? And you can put it out to know about yourself more and then choose what is your strength and what is your weakness. From your strength and your weakness, you can build your own strategy to carry out a plan and the things that I think for me is very important that to find motivation. You can call it motivation, you can call it pressure, you can call it a goal, but for me I see it as the same things because from my personal experience when I uh, was crowned Miss Grand International, I received a lot of stereotypes like Beauty queens go along with brandless, or beauty queens just have long legs without brand, or women cannot do this, women cannot do that, women cannot wear this, but women cannot wear that. That is very fresh. That's a very stressful. And some people call this pressure, but for me, I call it motivation because those people <coughs> that are the thing that push me work hard every day. That's why Do Them is out. That's why Ng Do Na Siu is out because I want to defend all of those still no tabs. And so, let's find yourself pressures, goals, motivation, limitation, everything that push you and keep your motivation high all the time to push you go out your comfort zone to be to become a unique individual. So, but remember one thing, that being different and being ridiculous is um, the boundary between that is quite subtle. So you have to make sure that all of the things that you aiming for is legally, morally, and socially accepted. So, do pioneers have to create significant change? I uh, seem to recall to the janitor from my episode 4, my Ludem series, who said that she chose, her, she chose her occupation because she enjoyed it and she was so proud of it. And she did it to preserve her family tradition that, in, that initiated by her parents. And that's so surprised me because I never heard anyone who worked as a cleaner answer like that. So that's actually contrary to the popular belief that you would choose to work as a cleaner because you are not wealthy. So she is actually a pioneer already. She is a pioneer in her mindset and then she become a pioneer in her workforce and then she become a pioneer in her generation. Before you become a pioneer in the community, you can become a pioneer in your own self first. You pioneers have to create significant change. Of course not. The micro thing will lead to the macro things. So to end my um, speech, I don't want to just only encourage you guys to do this three step that I just mentioned. I want to use this time to encourage us, it's me, you and me, to do the three steps that I mentioned and also reduce the time that we're laughing when we see someone or something doing something weird or odd, because I do it sometimes. <laughs> but after all, we realize that we want to make, we want to become a pioneer 
And we also want to make an environment that can create more pioneers. And that's what we need to practice. We practice not just for ourselves, but we also need to practice for the community, for the social, and for the environment also. So, uh, let's practice. And thank you for hearing this message.